Is there board members who have questions? Deputy Ashworth? Yes, just to understand. Um, we're looking for, are we looking for action steps tonight or the 2019 was voted or was not voted? It's, I don't believe it was not voted. It has on, not right? been adopted as of yet. Right now. You, um, and, and, by, by the way, just I don't think it's officially up for adoption tonight. It's up for discussion tonight. And again, if based on the discussion or something like that, and that's one of the questions I have, if there are changes that it says are, uh, again, I don't know if there would be, but is, do we have to go back to Barbara to make the changes? Like, is, any, is that you or is that Brian? How do we... Like, what's the process? It's not important for the second, but I just think that's something, if we get to that point, how exactly that gets done. Excuse me, Chair, Mr. Hashim has joined us. Yes, I wrote it down when he came. I, I put down that he came in at 824. Um, you know, that this was prepared um, by Ms. Rogers or Heskins Rogers. Uh, Heskins Davidson. Or, I'm sorry, Do I, sorry. Okay, uh, and but in, in any event, so I would think that if the board had recommended amendments or edits or changes, that she would make them. Okay. Okay, um, Mr. Chair, I had no, I had some comments. Okay, good, 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 other good. people. Okay, my, my I, I comments. Thank you very much. Answer your part about the adoption. Okay. Um, so I actually have two comments. One, I appreciate you saying that it is not anything that binds you to it. At the same time, I know there are are, are people in town that if we don't find follow it will indicate that we've violated the OSRP. The OSRP apparently is and become the holy grail for people in town. And I said would take very serious as such, I represent council do not want to vote to voluntarily add properties to a document that may or may not be enforceable um, unless there's a reason for it. And what I mean by that is we have PSNG diversion money, and we do expect in the future additional PSNG diversion money. And for the council, the, the, for the members here who aren't aware of what that is, um, PSNG had done some work in Voti Park, and as a result, they were forced, I guess would be the word, to pay us $1.8 million. That said, in order to get that money, we have to restrict 3.6 something or acres of land. Therefore, we are restricting 3.6 acres of land to get the money. What I don't want to do in this document is, or anything, is voluntarily restrict properties that in the future I'll never have again to use for a diversion. So if you're not going to give me something for it, I'm not going to put anything on a list of restrictive space. We're not building on the Greenway. You cannot really build on the Greenway even if you wanted to. Why on earth would I want to voluntarily restrict that and then lock me out of utilizing that space in the future to give back to diversion money or anything else I want to bargain with the state of New Jersey. So that is my opinion that I am in favor of passing any OSRP, but without any new properties added to the list. Uh, that is my belief. I believe it's the belief of the council and those are my comments, Mr. Chair. All right, just to comment on that, I think which Ms. Liz Laney alluded to, is that ultimately council would restrict the property. The point is the RSRP and the master plan, it would be something that would be a recommendation. And then I and I agree with you totally because as soon as we put something into the master plan, like you say, it's the holy grail. The RSRP and the master plan part becomes holy grail. That means you have to do it and you go ahead. As opposed to it's a nice thing to do. When we had a $20 million, that CRMP was a $20 million park it was a skate park and this and that i mean it was a beautiful wish list but there was no 20 million dollars to do it and none of it happened it, it, it was a big written up plan and everything but nobody says anything about that but like people grab onto certain parts of things and that this has to be and that's a concern of mine i share with the deputy mayor and that is where it becomes then a battle royale so we have to make sure and that's something that i've been asking over the last two years to be clear and understanding as that goes on. So if something is not on the Rossi at this point, I don't even know if it's safe to recommend to put on the Rossi because then they'll say, well, you said you recommended to put on the Rossi. Why aren't you putting it on the Rossi? So I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. And it's it's a question of council ultimately decides and puts it on the Rossi. 
but I don't even think we should be recommending to the Rossi unless there's a reason to do it. I agree with you, Mr. Cohn. Uh, oh, sorry. Can I just, I'm sorry, yeah, yes. Mr. Cohen, just a second. Correct me if I said something wrong. Well, I, th I think the one thing I will say, and we can take a closer look at the recommendations, but the language is very much, you know, examine the potential, you know, look at it. it, it it's not saying necessarily, I mean, it's examine township owned properties for placement, not yeah, these welcome, on. Welcome so, yeah, Mr. Cohen. So I'm not, as a relative newcomer, and I'm not sure if this is what uh, Ms. Laney was trying to address, what Deputy Mayor Schwartz said and, and uh, Chair Bodner said, seems to make a lot of sense, right? Because the road to, as part of my French, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Um, obviously, we want to we preserve what we can, but we don't want to do something that's going to tie our hands. So is there any kind of counterpoint to what seems like a very straightforward um position that Deputy Mayor Schwartz put forth that we should be aware of? Well, okay, so I mean, if, if the board were to adopt the plan as is, you know, as I said, it, it, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the Rossi. Um, I will say the properties on the Rossi then are off the, I mean, this, this is not the reason to preserve property, but properties that are on the Rossi, it, it, um, when you're doing a housing element, you can exclude them as potential developable properties. That is a, a side advantage of putting something on the rest, but that shouldn't be the primary reason. Um, but I, I guess, uh, you know, I don't know. I just keep saying the same thing over and over again, which is that these are just recommendations and a lot of these recommendations for further study. I, I just want, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Stern, I see your hands. Uh, call Mr. Thompson, I'll let you know. I'll call Mr. Thompson next. Um, my comment was in and around what uh, Deputy Mayor Schwartz mentioned, which was regarding the PSCNG diversion monies. And if um, this PSCNG PSE diversion, this is something that has been in place how long and is this known throughout TNEC? Does TNEC is TNEC aware of this? Um, Deputy Mayor, Mayor, you can answer. Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely. This is um, there was a hearing signs notice and posted. Uh, I'm going to throw some rough times out there. COVID made the clocks a little messed up in my head. Um, about two years ago, PSE G was doing the diversion work. Now you may not remember this because simply put. Um, it was very minimal work. And we wake up one day and we find out if we let PSE&G do this minimal work, and if you remember along the Torero tracks, there was these big public hearing signs, they will give us $1.8 million. And we're like, well, how can we scratch that lottery ticket quick enough? Um, so we were ready. This is the money that we planned on using and upgrading our parks. The only caveat is that we have to restrict approximately three or so half acres of property, which I guess makes they're not giving you money for free. They want us to restrict properties. This has been going on for about two years. Uh, the bank account has been set up. The wire information has been submitted to uh, Green Acres we ex or in PSUNG. We expect that money in the next hopefully 60 or 90 days. We've been working on this for about two years. Uh, you may have heard it mentioned at various meetings. Um, the council has some great ideas of using this money in parkland to upgrade parks throughout town. One of the many reasons myself and other council members uh, have been taking tours in, of, of the parks. And uh, we hope to bring um, completion to this matter shortly. The, the point, of course, being, and just to circle back, is I don't want to voluntarily restrict properties that I cannot then use again. Uh, Green Acres is very strict with what properties they were taking from us. And I'd like to, we'd like to, the council would like to leave as many properties available to restrict in the future, if so required, required being that word. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Chair. Yeah, I, I just really wanted to ask uh, Ms. Laney to uh, maybe drill down a little bit more on one of the uh, list, uh, you know, items she spoke about, which is in particular the Rossi and the Greenbelt. You mentioned, if I if I quote you correctly, that there are only two properties listed 
uh, on the Rashi from the Green Belt, and the rest of them are not listed on the Rashi. Is that correct? Actually, I, I, it's my understanding none of them are listed on the Rashi, but two, it was discovered. I mean, we're um, well, are deed restricted. Are deed restricted. Okay. So, I mean, I, you know, just really to echo what the Deputy Watch and Chair Bodner said, and Mr. Hohn, and uh, you know, I, you know, the, the recommendation uh, to add those that list of Greenbelt properties to the Rossi. I mean, that would be. I, I mean, I wouldn't jump. I would not jump to do that. Right, and and, and I, I understand the reticence, and I think you know that really what I think the the Rossi specifically says is to look at those properties and see which you know to to analyze them. Uh, and examine it, and and you know that that is something that the council could do. I just wanted, to, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. I appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Lane. I, I mean, th those two properties that are de-restricted, as we all know, were were, were along the, the, the times we we're talking about the billboard and the hotel zone. I, I'm sure that, and the, uh, the storage unit. Uh, you know, I'm sure that. 50, 60 years ago that, you know, I understand what was de-restricted and what was being done. Maybe they didn't want to build a hotel, maybe they didn't want to build a storage unit, but I'm sure a billboard that is innocent and that would be on the border of Teaneck Englewood that barely could tell the difference whether it was Teaneck or Englewood and the billboard that sits 200 feet to the other side of the border, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, but that's what happened 50, 60 years later, it has that restriction, that restriction has to have. Four-sided so is, is not always 2020. Right. All That's right. correct. Other board members? This is Zombie, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, a couple of quick things. Number one is <clears throat> um, this OSR, this is a revision to an OSRP and a master plan that I guess already has many of these elements built in to it already, right? There's an OSRP on the books. There's That's a master correct. plan on the on the books. I, I, I don't know if it was called that in any of these things. I certainly don't think it was called that in your document. So I have two questions. Number one is, what's the net difference between what was there before and what's here now? Number one. And number two is, what's the, I mean, again, after I don't know how many meetings about hearing about this, what, what, what don't we get, or what, I shouldn't say that, What's the potential loss to Teaneck if we leave the current OSRP in place? Well, I, Green Acres actually requires that you update the raw or the. Oh, sorry, did you say the the current OSRP in place? Yeah, so we asked. Yeah, it requires the um, OSRP to be up. Well, you should <laughs> every ten years. It has to be updated every ten years. But, and, but it could be updated to say, okay, it was fine then, and it's fine now. We don't have to make any changes. Well, well, Mark, there are natural changes. For example, in the properties that were purchased by the, as Liz showed us, those two properties that were purchased and now one was added to the Rossi, one wasn't, but that's updating your inventory. So uh -huh. uh, in other words, it doesn't have to change the goals and objectives and the processing, but whatever actions took place to change your inventory and and your, to be, that's part of the update. So you're right in what you're saying, half, in other words, there are always going to be updates because you have to report the actions that took place and things did happen as they place. There's, there's Second that, part. The, the, yeah, I mean, I, I think also there has to be re-examination of the goals and objectives, which there was. And there also is an, a, a change in what the priorities are or what the, you know, the needs are. Certain, for example, like TNEC has seen a lot of multifamily development in certain areas. And so there may be a need for a park in a certain neighborhood that, 15 years ago, there wasn't a need. Right, but you know, or, or you mentioned the 10 minute, the 10 minute walk. In right. 2007, I don't think that existed yet or it was just getting started. Right. So 10 minute walk to, to anywhere, there's a movement, we had this before, where any any person living in the next should be able to walk park within 10 minutes. In 2007, that did, that's been added to 2019. And that doesn't mean tomorrow, Tina has to go and walk from every single house and then build a park and everything that doesn't exist. That's a perfect example of a recommendation idea 
to get parks as close to, and that's the concept of pocket parks. So you have some small park areas where the larger parks may be too far away. Uh, I, I guess my, 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 the disconnect for me is I, I don't see the huge amount of change and upheaval, including Mayor Schwartz's reticence to vote for this, and I'm just as reticent as he is to lock ourselves into anything, versus the amount of noise being made I mean, that I hear at every single, there's an issue with Holy Name Hospital. And I totally understand why the neighbors of Holy Name Hospital are up in arms against whatever the development is. It totally affects their backyard. I, I just don't, and I guess maybe we'll hear it in the good and welfare, you know, when it comes up. I just don't understand the level of I don't want to use a, a bad term. So uh, of, maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> no, I mean, no, uh, the level of uh, a volume associated with updating the OSRP versus the net differences in the OSRP that you're, you're, you're producing now. And everybody admits that we're technically not tying ourselves down to anything. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. And I don't know if there's a way to do that. Okay, any other board Okay, the, but the updated OSRP would permit you to get receive Green Acres funding that if you didn't have an adopt OSRP, you know, yes. that you wouldn't. Okay, but you just said I yeah, got my old OSRP think... with the new with the new met with the new buildings on it or whatever. Yeah, it I think no, I no, think no, what no, Mr. No. Zomick, I think what Mr. Zomick is trying to yeah. say, sorry, maybe you can correct me, is that if you were to if we were to not add anything to the new S new OSRP what would be the difference? We have updated our goals. We have updated our, you know, our review of the OSRP. You know, is there any change? Are we required? Maybe, Mr. Zomik, this might go quicker to your question. Are we required to add every new piece of property in town? And I think the answer to that is no. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess it help? sounded like from, from Deputy Mayor Schwartz that it's almost a, a paper tiger that it's not locking us into anything and nobody wants, I don't think any of us really want to vote on anything to lock us into anything. And Mayor Swart, Deputy Mayor can. Yeah, no, it's not, it's, it's, and I'm not sure if I'm answering your question. I don't want to vote on anything, even if it doesn't lock us in, because, right. because then we have certain people who are in the audience will sit up there and say, you violated the OSRP in all the, everything going after us on something that's really voluntary. And I think we can all close our eyes and hear him yelling right now. Well, well, well to be to be fair, over the past six pedestal on which they um, put uh, Ms. Laney should uh, inoculate us to anything that uh, by accepting her recommendation. Yeah, that was Bob Ross and Davis. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Just to just to go back, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Just to go back towards uh, a, a change, does the change <coughs> have to be significant, uh, minimal? Is there a requirement to the change um, um, in this um, document? Does it have to be, is Green Acres looking for a change that is significant, minimal? Is, is there? Uh, I, I'm not. A personal, but if we right. buy any property, add any property, or change it, there was no change, and you update the inventory, and, and the inventory is exactly the same as it was, then you're saying year to date, 10 years later, this, it's the same situation. As long as you take a little look at it and review yeah, it. Yeah, you, you still have to take the new look. Updating, updating doesn't necessarily have to have a change. Yes, you still have to. Do have changes? Sorry, yes. You, right. Okay, Miss Laney, go ahead. Say, say. No, I, I apologize to interrupt you, but it, yes, it. What Chair Bodner says is correct. I mean, even if absolutely nothing changed, you still have to re-examine these issues in order for Green Acres to adopt the OSRP, because Green Acres also has to approve the OSRP, and that also um, allows you to get the funding. Okay. I, I want to just say something, and and, and this is not a act to one another, but just to understanding. Uh, there have been statements made at, at Good and Welfare where people got up and said, um, so-and-so got a million and a half dollars green acres, so-and-so got this green acres, so-and-so got that, and we didn't get green acres it's because we didn't have it. I, I'm not saying the fact the other, but someone got up there and said, doesn't mean we didn't have money because of our uh, 
OSRP status. You could adopt your OSRP, be up to date, still not Green Acres doesn't have to give it to you. And we've gotten Green Acres in the past. So you apply, you get, and sometimes you don't get. I'm not getting into a debate and discussion with anybody about it, not now or later, but just because people get up to be experts during good and welfare and tell us facts of what happened didn't happen, don't necessarily mean they're the actual facts of what happened. And that's just important for people to understand. Yeah. All right, more bedroom, more discussion from board members. All right, so um, again now, uh, Ms. Laney, going back to the um, questions about the differences. So the updated inventory, obviously, inventory is inventory. So we can't debate the inventory, and the inventory is what it is. Um, the 10 minute parking park is, is one significant updated item in here. Um, the discussion about the Greenbelt properties was not mentioned in 2007. That is a new item in 2019. That is correct. Well, no, it was. It was part of the Greenway that was proposed in 2007. Greenbelt. Uh, green, green no, I, I know, but it was called a Greenway, the Greenway plan in 2007. I'm confused. The whole system. That's, yes. Yeah, and that was I part want of to it. say something to the newer board members, and I'll be clear, because there's so many terms going out, CRMP and most and Rossi and OSRP and Greenway and Greenbelt, it gets confusing. There are, there's a Hackensack River Greenway, which is trying to go from the Bogota borderline to, I guess, Bergenfield and Milford um, as much as possible. It is not interlinking the whole way down, but a, a walking trail uh, along the entire uh, uh, river end-to-end uh, -end of the town. Um, and, and it's an upkept trail, and for a long time, one of our board members was very involved with that. He no longer lives here. And also, I remember correctly, a couple of years ago, it was, it was designated uh, along the uh, United States trails list. Um, so that's that's the green way. And then the green belt is the, the route for non-developed land that you see along the trees and stuff for the woods during the winter um, uh, along, along the highway and obviously it continues and then breaks and continues again. So well, just to make things even more confusing, the 2007 plan whole sort of vision for the open space and recreation system within TNAC was called the, the Greenway. Oh. <laughs> and so that, <laughs> that includes- The Greenway, not the Hackensack River Greenway. Exactly, Greenway. that includes right, Hackensack but the, River. But, but, but specifically the Green Belt, the properties on Route 4, there is, that, yeah. it is a new item in 2019 to for the recommendation for them to be added to the Rossi. I don't remember that being 2007, unless I'm making a mistake. Well, it, it was part of that overall system, yes. Um, did it have any specific recommendations in the Rossi? Let me, I can double check and get back to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, in, in your other reviews of the two plans, is there anything else of a large significance that you can point out to besides updated language and changes and priorities and things that were done already taken out, what other um, items would you say are, are, is there updated in 2019 or changes in 2019? Um, I think actually, I mean, I think you covered them. I, um, I think that there are, you know, I, I think you've covered them, okay. the, the, the main, Things that were brought out. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yeah, could we add, uh, when we finish this whole thing, and uh, obviously we're not going to vote on this tonight, I assume, correct? Uh, could, we ask, could, we, could we ask through you, to, for, for Ms. Laney, to prepare a little memo to the planning board to specifically enumerate what the changes are? We could look at them without having to flip through too many pages. And so we can have a, you know, so each member could have, you know, their thoughts together. And think about how they want to, you know, you know, align on this whole thing. What do you think? Well, I, I, I think that's. I'm sorry, Chair. If I may. Or yeah, I, I was. I think it's a great idea, and I think maybe it's worthwhile uh, for this lady to contact Barbara Hudson Davis and talk to her because she did it, and she would be able to share with you some of the specific larger goals and what the direction were. Uh, I, I think I don't know exactly. We're not voting on this tonight, obviously, but I'm saying 
how we do in relation to what uh, so far Mr. Cohn, myself, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Vice Chair Stern, I think Mr. Zamek also indicated in relation to these restrictions and properties. And again, taking directly from the mayor, who, who clearly knows that uh, waiting to, at the right time to put stuff either onto the veracity or adding restrictions to land can be helpful to us and, and uh, beneficial financially to us, um, we can uh, look to do that and see how the other board members feel about that. Share that information. Um, through his lady when you have your meeting or conversation with uh, Barbara, and that way she could up, up accordingly. Um, the, the, the only reason why I love that idea, uh, Vice Chairman Stern and Chair, is if we have a list of the changes in your hand, you can then instruct your, uh, um, I'm sorry, I don't want to call her Barbara. Um, Barbara's last name is? David. 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 It, 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 Sorry, I kept that. And we said it at once, so I didn't get it. But that, asking that, asking asking the woman who had created the uh, the, the plan, you, when you have those changes in, in your hand, you can say, the, you know, these are our recommendations to have these changes removed, and then we can adopt. The, the key, I guess, the pragmatic uh, question I have for you guys, or the, the point I'm trying to make, is that to give you a road forward for adoption of an OSRP, obviously you do want to adopt one. Obviously you want to adopt one that doesn't have all of the changes complete, is you need to know the differences and which differences you're happy with, which ones you are. That's exactly right. Thank you. All right. Any other hands, physical or computer hands?